This is a 1985 Sears black and white portable television and AM and FM tuner. This shows a fair bit more than just the usual amounts and uh, indications of abuse and use throughout its lifetime. Let's face it, this is 30 years old and of course it is going to have some battle scars on it, but uh, really is no reason for some of the damage I uh, noticed on here, such as it's missing handle, it's completely cracked off. This glare shield is, uh, has definitely seen better days. It's broken off here and over here it's, it looks to have sustained a fall. Cracking this off and then uh, the glare shield actually looks like it stopped right about here. But this is broken off as is this side. My assumption of this being a Sears product or Sears under the Sears name at least is in fact correct as we can plainly see by the SR prefix preceding the model number. Really an unfortunate uh, and pretty miserable condition actually. It's also missing its dipole antenna which when new would have been used for its AM or rather its FM reception and VHF and UHF TV. It's also missing a plastic uh, rest here for the dipole. This is also snapped off and then it also looks to have been subjected to a spill of some kind. I've tried cleaning it up before this video, but uh, it still is uh, these markings on the plastic remain. Even with this TV's rather dreadful appearance, I still elected to bring it home and see, uh, well, just see how it would work, if it even worked. And the screen, surprisingly, looks to be in a healthy condition. Circular mark, I don't know if that's, um, because oxygen has this leak in this tube somehow and air is getting in. At least I believe that would, that's what that would indicate. I don't know. But uh, it should still work for now. I haven't actually powered it up. I have some buttons here for UHF, VHF, high and low, FM and AM. Of course, this does have FM stereo as mentioned on its top. But that is only if you use the uh, stereo phones jack. Okay, well this is the tuning dial, and it's actually separated between UHF, VHF, and then FM and AM. And how you go about operating it and tuning it is for the TV section, you use this knob on the right. And for the radio, be it AM or FM, the left tuning knob is used. Of course, it's not made in China, it's actually made in Korea. In July of 1985, so in the mid-1980s. This was what you would buy if you wanted to listen to the radio and watch TV on the go, or just with a very small apparatus such as this. Quite a lengthy model number, 580.50290450. I don't know why the Sears branded products had such lengthy model numbers. So I'm sure they didn't have a large, uh, a catalog large enough to warrant such considerably sized uh, model numbers and it seems you were once able to get uh, parts in the service for this once upon a time there is a switch for enabling and disabling the internal rod antenna if not you can revert to using an external antenna which would certainly garner better results than uh, the limitations imposed by such a small rod antenna especially with FM stereo a figure of eight power cord that uh, actually seems to be keyed. So I'll have to see about finding the proper power cord once upon a time. I did have that power cord, but uh, being that this has been sitting around for probably close to a year now, I haven't uh, the foggiest idea where that cord could have actually vanished and ventured off to. There's also a 12 volt DC Input center pin positive for operation of this television off your car battery, presumably. The bottom of the unit isn't terribly exciting, save for this built-in flip-up stand. I didn't even know about until uh, I went to see if it, what, what kind of batteries it took and to insert the batteries for operation. And then I noticed this uh, interesting looking piece of metal which actually assists with improving the viewing angle of the television.
battery compartment is in remarkably good condition when you consider the kind of shape the rest of the unit is in. Of course the spiders have taken up residence. There's no storage compartment for the power cord, which is probably how I ended up losing it. A lot of boom boxes during this time, and even in the 90s for that matter, gave you a neat little storage compartment to uh, stow away the power cord when operating it off of batteries. Well, I actually went to the trouble of digging out the Sony CFS-230 boom box so that I can actually uh, harvest its power cord for now. However, this is not a keyed, uh, or at least a squared off figure of 8 connector, so it remains to be seen whether or not this will actually work. Only time will tell. That and shutting the camcorder off to facilitate my inserting this connector. Slightly wobblier than I would have liked for it to be, but I'm not complaining. And of course, this would be a very good time to hope that the circuit breakers are in full working order. And let's make sure that this is set to a sane setting and the volume is not set to its maximum and we will set it to UHF oh well it is working if you can excuse those scan lines caused by the uh, I believe the image stabilization of his camcorder and also the shutter speed we are getting snow and of course there won't be anything or any chance of receiving analog television with this being that it's long after the 2009 digital TV transition and it's missing its dipole antenna to boot and I did have one didn't manage to venture oh there it is and these uh, never knew these were easily replaceable of course it's missing a little screw that secures it so this is going to be an effort in futility Without its dipole antenna, it's still receiving and uh, managing satisfactory results on FM. So perhaps it's using its uh, power cord as an antenna of sorts, and perhaps this is only used for the television. Of course, you can't ask and expect much of such a small speaker and it's FM mono but in a pinch it was certainly better than nothing and it affords you the great ability to entertain yourself with TV so let's go ahead and uh, get a VHF modulator to test the uh, video capabilities of this since we're getting nothing but snow up to the task is this battered Panasonic forehead Omnivision VHS VCR and it does work and what I need, and I'm concerned about, is the coaxial output, the RF modulator, integrated into this VCR. So I'll use this to convert the 75 ohm coaxial cable connector to the 300 ohm twin lead screw terminals on the back of the TV. And we should get a picture. Well, we've made a secure connection. I'm only using the VHF output of this, I forget the name of this, Balin, I believe it is, or also a matching transformer. There's an alternative name by which these are referred to. I'm not using the UHF section since this only has a channel 3 or 4, uh, or a modulator capable of transmitting on channel 3 or 4, which is VHF low. Certainly some interesting and peculiar patterns being displayed on the TV. This is for the TV, and eventually we will get to just a blank screen, at least I believe so. <laughs> and the uh, entertainment this evening will be provided courtesy of this 1980s Magic Vision VHS tape from 1988. Oh, and we do have a picture. You look at that.
Well, I have to shut off uh, steady shot and maybe play with the shutter speed just to get this to, uh, to come out on the camera without these hard scan lines. So just a moment. Well, indeed, steady shot proved to be the only thing necessary to turn off to get a consistently clear picture without those black scan lines. And this looks to be very grainy, though. I don't recall it, uh, the output of this VCR being so terribly grainy on color television. So perhaps the... Uh, that was definitely not off-tuned. And we do have volume. We do with the magic. We look again. The ball has returned to the base. Ah, it's a fine trick. Put the cap back on. Make some more magic. Remove the cap. Where's the ball? Back in my pocket. Once again, the ball on the vase disappears and reappears in its home in the red vase. During the time I probably should have, I neglected to mention the presence of some picture adjustment controls on the top hidden beneath this flap for the vertical hold, brightness and contrast, which I don't think I need to adjust because it's not flickering, unless that happens. Switching it to AM reveals very interesting interference when using the VCR. Sounds most pleasant, don't you think? It sounds like a running bus, or maybe a diesel engine. So there you go. Don't use a VCR or place it nearby your AM tuner. You'll hear nothing but diesel engine sounds in the form of interference. the kind of music they should be playing on AM. This has a very sensitive AM tuner. Notice the recurring theme. Seems with all these electronic items I've been testing and evaluating and demonstrating in my various YouTube videos such as that abhorrent and dreadful what is it the uh, Jensen uh, turntable with AM and FM tuner. Terrible in every regard except for the AM tuner. The AM tuner was just great in every respect. It was able to tune in all the difficult to listen to stations in this area that uh, are either very weak or obfuscated with uh, interference. <laughs> it's just amazing. It always seems to be that way. And now time to disassemble it and take a look at what comprises a typical black and white television AM and FM tuner combo system manufactured in 1985. Time to get our screwdrivers ready. Well, this is going to be the extent of the disassembly procedure. So I really don't feel like having to remove any more screws than I already have. And I also really don't um, take pleasure in, uh, well, having to remove all of these connectors, some of which are probably permanently soldered. Yep, like for the speaker, which looks to be a one and a half watt and eight ohm speaker and a transformer definitely smells like 1980s electronics and what's this on here that says okay well it does mention that it has implosion protection this was certainly made to be uh, surfaceable back when uh, electronics weren't of a disposable nature. The dipole antenna looks to be uh, easily enough replaced. Looks to just be held in place with a single screw. So if I wanted to I could definitely replace that but again I don't know if it's worth it although I do have a uh, soft spot for vintage electronics. And uh, this certainly being uh, no exception.
Okay, that's not good. This is <laughs> the reason for my uh, apprehension of uh, taking this apart. I don't, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to figure out where this connects to. Because I don't see any, obviously, uh, any, I don't see any uh, areas where it would obviously connect to. And it looks like all the connectors are populated on the board, so. Yeah, this is going to take some time. And that's for the, uh, what is that for? Oh, that's for the speaker, that's kind of important. Disaster averted, I just discovered that the uh, connector for it is right alongside the headphone jack. So, now of course it's not long enough. Well, this is going to take some finesse. Well, if ever you uh, are curious to see what happens when a handicam falls on the ground, live on video, well, there you have it. This fell on the ground, and it's still recording. Very, uh, well, that's a first for me. It shows that this camera is still recording, but uh, that was a pretty uh, dangerous fall. <laughs> and um, I don't know if it's working or not. And it's complaining of a low battery all of a sudden. So that'll be it for the Sears SR3000 5-inch black and white TV and AM and FM stereo radio.